You will be participating in the physical abilities test for the Milwaukee Police Department. This test is broken into four events. Each event evaluates abilities necessary to successfully complete the tasks of a police officer. In general terms, the four events simulate getting to the problem, resolving the problem, and removing the problem. Specifically, getting to the problem will involve an obstacle course followed by a simulated takedown effect and a simulated handcuffing of a resisting suspect. Resolving the problem consists of two separate tasks. The first is a trigger pull, six per hand. The second is a simulation of separating and controlling individuals in a dispute or other similar task where pulling is required. This will be measured by pulling a weighted object across a line and to the ground two times. Finally, removing the problem, 25 foot dummy drag. Upon completion of this general overview, this video will provide more detailed information about each of these events. All four events will be timed, so your speed will affect your score. You must complete all events within a maximum time to pass the test. Therefore, you must pace yourself during this examination so that you do not become exhausted or risk injury before the examination is complete. In addition, you must pay close attention to this video and to the directions of the test monitors. Failure to follow the monitor's directions may result in your elimination from the selection process. Finally, remember that at any point in the testing process, if you fail to continue with the testing process as instructed, you will be disqualified from consideration. Now, let's take a look at each of the physical ability test events. Just prior to the first event, you will be required to put on a duty belt, which you will continue to wear for all four events. Attached to this belt will be a holster with a fake gun and a baton to simulate the actual belt worn by Milwaukee police officers. The first event is the obstacle course. This event is a timed, approximately 400-yard obstacle course marked by cones. You will be required to cover the course in a quick but safe manner. This event is timed, so speed will affect your score. However, you must continue to keep in mind that police officers perform their duties in a way that is quick and efficient without risking unnecessary injuries. As you will see, you will be faced with obstacles to go through, under, over, and around. You will begin this event at the start line. A monitor will say ready, and then after a few seconds will say go. You may not begin until the go command is issued. You will run five laps course and do one obstacle per lap. Obstacles are numbered in order from one to five. The number displayed on the obstacle will correspond to the lap in which you should perform that obstacle. Specifically, the order in which you will complete the obstacles is as follows. On lap one, you will go through the window. Please watch your head and note that you are not permitted to dive through the window. On lap two, you will go wall. You may not use the side braces as a step to get over the wall. On the third lap, you will ascend and descend the stairs. You must touch every step on your way up and down the steps. If you miss a step, a monitor will require you to go back and touch the step or steps that you missed. On lap four, you will go under the barrier. You may not use the barrier as a to crawl or roll under. If you do use the barrier as a support, a monitor will require you to go under the barrier again without using it as a support. You may roll or crawl. Both ways are shown. On the fifth and final lap, you will go most of the way around the course until you get to the cone labeled 5A. You will turn left immediately after you pass the cone and weave around the lettered cones in sequence, B, D, through cone H. Follow the arrows on the floor to know which way to go. If you miss a cone, a monitor will require you to round the cone correctly and continue the course from there. Once you have completed the cones, proceed to the power station. At the power station, you must first complete the bag push. 
Go between the bag and the power station frame so that you can push the bag towards the line on the floor. Grasp the with both arms. Do not grab above the tape that goes around the top of the bag. Move forward, pushing the bag, until you touch the bag to the floor beyond the three-foot line, which is marked with tape. When you touch the bag to the floor, it must be fully across the line. If the bag touches the line, the monitor will require you to do it correctly. Move backward to return the bag to the starting position. Part of the event tests your ability to control an object which is resisting your move. You may not let go of the bag until the weights are in the resting position. If you let go of the bag and allow it to snap back, you will be required to redo the entire bag push. Next, move to the other side of the power station to the simulated handcuffing machine. Kneel on one or both knees and pull one bar with one hand inward toward your body. Then, while holding the first bar inward, pull the second bar with your other hand toward your body. It does not matter which handle you grasp first, but do not reach for both handlebars at the same time. If you pull both bars in at the same time, the monitor will require you to do it correctly. When the handlebars touch in the middle, the monitor will say stop. Once a monitor says stop, the clock will stop running. However, you are required to slowly return the handlebars to their starting positions. Do not allow the handlebars to snap back. You will receive one score for this event, which will consist of the total elapsed time from the initial go command to the stop command, given when the handlebars touch in the center. After this event, water will be provided and you will be allowed up to 20 seconds to drink, if you wish, before continuing. The second event, your pull, using each hand separately. You will start by holding the gun at your side in either hand. At the ready, go command, raise the gun with your arm fully extended until it is parallel to the ground. Then, squeeze the trigger six times with your index finger. You will hear the hammer fall with each successful pull. Without lower arm, transfer the gun to your other hand and squeeze the trigger six more times. Finally, lower your arm to your side to complete this event. When you lift the gun to fire it, your arm must be parallel to the ground. Your other arm should be at your side. You must complete six shots with each hand. Time will stop when you have successfully completed six trigger pulls with each hand and returned your arm to your side. The third event is the bag pull. The equipment for this event is the same bag on the power station that you used near the end of the obstacle course. This time you will start facing the bag with your toes at the taped line. You will step forward, wrap your arms around the bag, and pull the bag backward to touch the bottom of the bag to the floor beyond the line, which is marked with tape. You will then bag back to the starting position and repeat the same operation again. You may not grab the bag above the tape that goes around the top of the bag. Note that you will pull the bag to the floor two times. The entire bottom of the bag must cross the line marked with tape each time. If the bag touches the line, the monitor will require you to do it correctly. You should not let go of the bag from the time you first grab until you have returned it to the starting position following the second pull. The monitor will tell you if a pull is not being done correctly and will require you to correct it. If you let go of the bag and allow it to snap back, you will be required to redo an entire bag pull. The monitor will say stop when the bag is correctly returned to the starting position after the second pull. The full last event is the dummy drag. You will begin by standing inside the black starting line with your back foot on the line. When the monitor says go, run past the dummy and touch the opposite black line with a foot. Then turn and run to the dummy. 
grab the dummy by the strap. Using the strap, drag the dummy toward the taped finish line. You may use one or both hands. Continue dragging you and the dummy cross the taped finish line. The dummy's feet must cross the finish line. You have seen close-up and slow motion views of each event of the physical abilities test so that you will know how to do them correctly. Next, you will see a candidate go through the entire test to give you a clearer idea of the course layout and the location of the events. Event 1. Lap 1. The Window. Lap 2, the wall. Lap 3, the stairs. Lap four, the barrier. Lap five, cone weave. Action 1, the bag push. Action 2, the handcuffing simulation. Event 2, the trigger pull. Event 3, the bag pull. Event 4, the dummy drag. When you are tested, you will have two monitors assigned to you who will see that you know where to go and what to do. If at any time during the test you begin to perform an action incorrectly, the monitor will say no to get your attention and immediately tell you what you must do to correct your action. The monitor's comment will be as quick and brief as the situation allows. You should react to the correction as quickly as you can so that you don't lose more time than necessary. If you have any questions about anything in the video, you should ask the monitor in the video area or one of your test monitors for an explanation before beginning the test. Thank you for participating in the testing process. We wish you success in the physical ability and hope to see you as a Milwaukee police officer.